field is so deep that, you know, the Wood Memorial winner who looked very good doing it is the 12 to 1 co fifth choice with the two year old champion who won the Bluegrass, and your Louisiana Derby winner's 30 to 1. I mean, just, you look. You know, just your thoughts on this field. You know, it's, it's unbelievable. This is my fourth derby in eight years, and probably my best chance to win. Uh, if Uncle Mo would have been healthier in 2011, it might have been different. But, you know, I, I said most years I might have the second and the fourth favorite, and here I got like the sixth and the ninth favorite. And it's just, it's just a, it's a really, really deep field, toughest derby I've ever seen as a owner, but even as a fan. I mean, so uh, it's exciting. I mean, it's, it's, it's a great derby, and. Uh, you know, I, I think the horses that come in the top five maybe would have won the Derby, you know, two or three times over the past five or six years. But it, hey, this, these are the cards we're dealt, and uh, it's an exciting race. Uh, going to be great TV, and uh, I think it's going to get some high ratings, and uh, it's a real interesting race. How do we analyze Vino Russo? That uh, you know, he he didn't run his A races certainly at Tampa, and then he did run his A race in, in the Wood Memorial. Um, what do you, what's your view and what's your trainer's view, do you think? Yeah, I, I think <clears throat> a couple things about Vino. I think, I don't think he liked the surface of Tampa uh, because we, we raced him there back to back, Sam Davis and Tampa Bay. And in the same spot by the far turn, he lost momentum. He started spinning his wheels. Um, and then he started coming down the stretch and gaining ground, but it was way too late. Uh, I think as he, he got older and the distances got further from a mile and a 16 to a mile and eight, uh, he's being out of, you know, being out of curling. Um, you know, he's going to love this mile and a quarter. He's going to love Belmont even more than a mile and a half. And every day he gets older, and every day I think he's getting better, and I think he's peaking at the right Absolutely time. Absolutely, is one horse that, and I think John Velasquez, that's one reason he, he picked him. He said he thought that the mile and a quarter would be something he'd really relish versus something he might just tolerate. Yeah, I, I think when you go into this race, 90% of the time, you're really not sure any horse is going to get the mile and a quarter until they run this race. And uh, I think there's like two or three horses almost every race, which are pretty sure. I mean, him being out of Curlin, um, being a, a, a half to commissioner, um, you know, who both were second in the Belmont. So uh, I think uh, there's one thing for sure, he's going to get the distance. And then poor old Noble Indy, he's only been beaten one time. And like, I hate to say it, but nobody's really talking about him much. You know what, I think it's a combination. One, it's a really, really tough field. And his race was six weeks ago. It was the first, you know, you know, big derby prep, uh, Louisiana Derby. It was six weeks ago, and so many interesting, great things have happened with the bluegrass and the wood and the Florida Derby. I think, I think, he, I think he's being overlooked. But listen, if he if he broke second and third and he won this race, I got news to you. You know, Windstar, Todd Fletcher, and Mike Rapoli wouldn't be shot. Three of the horses you really have to beat are, well, two of them, because two of them, the other two you own, are but your stable mates. I mean, is it kind of like if you can be the top dog in the Fletcher barn, you'll take your chances anywhere else? You know, it, 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 it's funny. I mean, uh, I, I might be, we, we might have the third and fourth uh, favorites in Todd's barn. So we're, we're not even the favorite in Todd's barn with Magnum Moon and uh, obviously Audible, but. You know, listen, I've been with Todd for over 10 years now, and, and you know, what he's done is, is amazing. And, and getting three to five horses here to the Derby every year is, is you know, I don't think he gets enough credit for it. And, uh, you know, everyone wants to talk about his Derby record. He's won two Derbies, but, you know, getting these horses to win the Louisiana Derby, win the uh, Wood Memorial, win the Florida Derby, you know, and uh, and uh, and win the Arkansas Derby. I mean, that's that's a feat in itself. He's the only one to ever do it with different horses in the same year. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's, it's just uh, another accomplishment by by Todd Plesher, which I think many people just take for granted. What do you make of the two favorites, Justify three for three, unraced at two, and Mendelssohn wins the UAE Derby by eighteen? To me, they're mystery horses for two favorites because they they have question marks. Oh, I I, I definitely think they're they're mystery horses and. Um, you know, if, 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 if Justify is first by two lengths, nobody's going to be surprised. And if he's 10th by 12 lengths, I don't think anybody's going to be surprised. I mean, um, he's obviously probably the most talented horse in this field by far. Um, but, you know, it's, 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 you know, most times the most talented horse doesn't always win. You know, I mean, you know, 20 horses, that first turn, a lot of racing luck, you know, you know, bad break. I mean, a lot of things can happen. Different surface, mile and a quarter. So there, there's questions about 20 horses. Uh, so you can make a case why it's easier to make a case why the each one won't win than make a case why why each one will win.